Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got another sprinkle to add on top of the ocean collapse Sunday we built yesterday. We've got astronaut risk and solar forcing, and we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where we find that the last day was more quiet than it could have been, but still with signals of concern today and throughout this week. We took an M5 solar flare this morning from one of the incoming active region sunspots, and as we were discussing yesterday morning, the proton radiation concern is perhaps the highest of the concerns. Flaring is elevated the last week, and that should be expected to continue. Large sunspots with magnetic complexity are on the Earth-facing half of our star at the moment, especially on the south, just having crested the eastern limb. This one is the largest, but luckily its flaring hasn't matched its size due to a fairly stable magnetic setup the last two days. We have a largely split magnetic character to the active region. Those areas in the central corridor of umbral development where blue and red are close together is where the flare triggering would be born, right in the middle. And if that happens, it could be bad. We are in a level 2 proton radiation storm at the moment here on Earth, and that's not great because those are extremely concentrated towards the polar region, where several astronauts are on a multi-day mission that is the first ever polar orbit of humans. Now, there's a very good reason we haven't tried that before. There are risks, and one is already stirring. Eyes open, folks. Those astronauts are already taking a bit extra radiation up there. We're watching closely in the days ahead for more. Excellent online preprint of May's leading story from this journal. As the temperature rises on the planet, the outgoing heat-related radiation from Earth increases too. Makes perfect sense. Until a geomagnetic storm occurs, in which case the relationship falls apart and the heat is trapped. That's not in climate models, and sorry, propagandists, this is no April Fool's joke. Time to put the sun, geomagnetism, and particle forcing where it belongs in climate models. Folks, yesterday we went over some of the key signals of the ocean heat transport collapse in the AMOC, the main trigger that will end global warming and throw us back hard into cold. We went over where those signals are seen creeping towards now, even at the great depths below the surface, and today we let these guys chime in, some of the best on Earth, and their conclusion? This AMOC ocean system is far less stable than the models are guessing. She's heading towards the cliff now, with most likely collapsed timelines being early 2040s. Sound familiar, huh, observers? Folks, April really kicks off the heavy schedule of events at Observer Ranch. Quail day in two weeks, and then it's a mad dash through data, cycles, prepping classes, special guests, and overall disaster readiness. Spots for the grand opening dinners with Dr. Robitaille and myself are filling fast. In addition to nearby hotels, folks, there's a lot of ways to stay at the ranch. Head to ObserverRanch.com for the event list, booking details, and more. And for those who get Observer Review, our e-magazine, we're doing Jupiter for the monthly special issue coming out tomorrow. Jupiter is the most changing planet in the ongoing solar system shift, and breaking down its various changes is a key aspect of this cycle event. You can access all issues anytime when you subscribe to the e-magazine. Link is below. All links are below, actually. The e-magazine Observer Review, Observer Ranch, and much more. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.